Hey, deserved listeners, Darcy and Stacy. Let's watch. No, I'm still God. Stop it. I swear I thought you did. I just like it. I'm sorry about to be on it. Tomorrow is the show. Uh, so, I don't think so. This is this, uh, our collection. Deal. We're launching our men's swimwear collection. No. Okay, so on one hand, Darcy and Stacy are concerned about their show, and they want to launch their bikini briefs for men. Or what do you call them? <laughs> Banana hammocks is what we call them. For some reason, I would have thought that Georgie and Florian would have been into it. I'm guessing that I follow the same prejudice that all European men not only are okay with it, but are you know they prefer it. <laughs> you know, that's the that's the American stereotype, which of course. It's ridiculous, and Florian and Georgie are like, okay, I guess some European men want wear this, but as European men, we're not into it. <laughs> like, I want something that is more modest, that will uh, lend itself to less accidents of the snake, as Georgie puts it. So anyway, I, I get that Darcy and Stacy. I'll take their word for it that it's it's important to their business that they do this. Okay, and but Georgie and Florian, they don't want to. So. Why? <laughs> I'm guessing that their business model doesn't depend on forcing their partners into revealing parts of themselves on stage and on international television that they don't want to against their consent. Again, it's not the same thing gender-wise. Sometimes people will you know, reverse the genders and act like it's the exact same thing, and it's not because of power and privilege and objectification. Standards are different for genders, but it, it does illuminate a little bit that if you were to reverse this and someone, ha wa men were forcing women to wear things that they weren't comfortable with, then we would say that's disgusting. And it's not to my, in my scale of culture, it's not as bad as that. Maybe it's 50%, but it's still bad. <laughs> you know, why would you emotionally pressure someone to wear something that they don't want to? What would be the purpose of that? No. And the whole irony behind it all is that they're professional models. They've done this before. They've done this before, and they've worn, they've never denied many things wearing in the past on a shoot or on a runway show. So my wife is a professional model, and I have learned through her various different stereotypes and uh, problems that she will experience, one of which is this assumption like, well, you're a model, so just do it. As if by claiming that you're a model or being a professional model means that you have to do everything that everyone tells you to do, which of course is, no, it's ridiculous. Um, I'm a therapist. Does that mean I have to do everything that clients want me to do or everything that people expect therapists to do? No, <laughs> like I, I can still draw a boundary. You can have a preference. I mean, you could literally as a model say, I'm never t gonna wear clothes that reveal any skin beyond my elbow. Like, that's just, you know, if, if you need that, don't hire me, which is fine. But I'm gonna do these kinds of jobs and I'm not gonna do these kinds of jobs. So this idea of like, one, that they're professional models and thus should do it regardless is not true. Uh, the second thing is that they're claiming that they've done this sort of modeling before, which, you know, I, I guess I'll take their word for it, but that still doesn't mean that you can for, I mean, people's bodies change over time or their sensibilities change over time, or they know this is in a different context because they're on international television when they're doing this. They're not just doing it for a magazine that's gonna be seen by a smaller amount of people. So there's a lot of factors to go into it. And to put them on the spot, they might have real reasons as to why they don't wanna do this, and they're forced on camera in front of strangers to talk about why not just respect it. Like just, this is just more examples of, I don't know, what label do I put to it? Not being nice. They should be our biggest supporter. And I don't know if they realize that they're causing more difficulties and more stress the day before the show. Guys, we've always been there for you. Can you just be there for us? We shouldn't have to beg you. Seriously, we don't have any other option. You don't have any other option. You have to wear these bathing suits. Everything hinges. We have all these other models that are probably 
cool with wearing that sort of thing. The two of you must wear these bathing suits or else the whole thing is ruined. No, I cannot. I mean, and maybe they can convince me that their entire business model requires forcing their partners to dressing up in a certain way that they don't want to, but uh, what? I want to black. Yeah, make it black. Yeah. That's, that's what that's I'm talking about. That's, right? that's how we living. living. Yeah, baby. What do you think? The South it is very... <laughs> I'm guessing what's going through his mind is, I don't like it, and he has a number of adjectives for it, but then he's like, well, wait, I don't want to be in trouble with Darcy. Uh, you know, I think for Darcy and Stacy, this business venture is, is very emotionally important to them. I think that that's fine, and Georgie wants to support that, and he has been, I think. I will say, I had a very brief experience like this, and it just occurred to me that, I, because it happened so long ago, I was... I was in a fraternity, University of Washington, and the uh, fraternity, they nominated me to enter this contest called Mr. Greek. I don't know if they do this anymore, but essentially it was like a pageant where they, the judges nominate you to win Mr. Greek, and every fraternity sends their someone who might win, <laughs> I guess, let's put it, and also someone willing to do it. I, I was young in the fraternity and so I, I'm guessing the older guys were like I don't want to do that so I did it and one of the things that you do is you know it's a talent portion so I sang a song maybe I'll actually even show a picture of that right now but the other thing that they had us do was back in the day there was a I don't know if it was a national chain but there was a clothing store called Squire Shop and I, I don't know if it was all over the states but it was here in Seattle and they essentially sold clothes for teenage teenage boys. So they backstage said, you're gonna wear this and you're gonna wear this because they were trying to get, part of the reason why Mr. Greek was funded was because Squire Shop was paying for advertising, which is essentially to make us uh, dress up in certain clothing and do runway modeling. And, you know, we're just a bunch of frat guys. Um, I'm guessing none of us were professional models and so, they made us dress up in these clothes and backstage they just gave me these things and the shirt I thought was okay it was just this striped t-shirt but these pants were not for me and since I'm not a professional model you know Stacy my wife is a model and I'm guessing that there are times when she wears things that she wouldn't wear outside um, I think she likes a lot of the clothes that they give her but I think uh, and sometimes she literally just comes home with clothes and socks, <laughs> and I don't think that's very often. I, I you know, I th in fact, I think my wife even said one of the most frequent questions she gets as a model is, "Do you get to keep the clothes?" I think she even told me that, and I think she's like, "Almost never, no." <laughs> like, why would they send clothes home with me? Like, they pay me. They're not gonna. They're not gonna give me their merchandise. They're, they want to sell it. I could have all that wrong. This is all just kind of going off a vague memory of what my wife would tell me about it. Anyway, the point is, is that they wanted me to wear this outfit, and I, just before going up on stage, I was like, I'm not wearing these pants. <laughs> these pants. And so I, the last minute, I took off the pants and put on my own pants, and I thought, okay, I'll get by. You know, I can stand by this. And it was, you know some value village pair of jeans with my um, crappy uh, belt that I actually got from a security guard job that uh, I, I think it was that belt. I had that belt for a long time. It was a real solid belt, leather belt. Anyway, I was a security guard for a long time. I go on stage and I feel so goofy because I'm not a model. And so I kind of played it up. I, I, I made fun of the whole thing. I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, kind of like rolling my eyes as I was doing it. And so anyway, I'll post a picture hopefully right here of me doing that. Lo and behold, um, I didn't win. I didn't last to the second round. Like I got eliminated. <laughs> my point is, is that Georgie, I, I, I didn't know he was a model. I, I knew Florian was, but at the very least, Georgie's just like, yeah, you know, it's not for me. And models, They'll dress what you know within reason what you put, but I think Georgie's thinking, yeah, I mean, I, I'll I'll participate, but and I'll help out, but I don't want to sell my soul in the process. Anyway, that's just my reaction to that. Try it with the mouthpiece on. 
but don't play with that. Because... Panic attack, I think. You shouldn't be. You? You're gonna be fine. You never know what's down there. What I don't know. Gonna I don't know. I had a, me and Stacy had a dream when we were younger that we were chased by a shark and our dad had to like swim out in the middle of the ocean. To... Yeah, it's a totally normal phobia uh, that pe a lot of people have if you're not accustomed to swimming, or even if you are, that um, a lot of people will report uh, because you know that there are creatures in the water and you can't really see them. You know, it's because when your head's above water, they could be anywhere, right? You could, you could be surrounded by sharks or even just the idea of something touching your, you know, even if it was a, a nice fish, the idea of it touching you while you were, it's, you know, I, I don't have that phobia. Uh, I have other phobias, but I don't have that one. And so it's, it's a normal fear. And if she has that fear, then I would just say, count her out of this. Plus snorkeling is a whole thing. If you haven't snorkeled before, it's, it's an adjustment to the first few times that you put your face in the water and you, you know, you're know you supposed to breathe through the tube and intellectually understand that everything's gonna be fine, That you, but your body has been trained evolution-wise that when your face is submerged in water, do not breathe in because you will drown and die. So you have to overcome that instinct, which can be hard to do. So I, I, I can't imagine this going well. Be careful. I know, Baba. Sit on the edge of the boat. Ready? One, yes. two, three. Woo! Oh my God, I'm go! Mom used to live a little. Come on. Do something spontaneous. Like, come on, girl. Oh my God. So that's often an attitude that people will try to uh, adopt, which is live in the moment when you have when you have a phobia, it's not a matter of not living in the moment. It is a matter of a physiological response that you have no control over, particularly if you don't have any way of combating it cognitively. So I wouldn't say live a little, mom. I would say like, are you sure you want you sure you want to do this? Oh cold. Oh my goodness. So the other th thing about this is wearing the, you know, what do you call them? Flippers? <laughs> I don't know what you call them. The things you put on your feet when you're uh, trying to accelerate your swim speed uh, is, um, it's a whole skill. And if if you're not familiar with it, then you probably shouldn't wear those things. It can be real, uh, especially when you're trying to get out of the water, it, you can really get hung up and can cause more panic. So, uh, I don't know, maybe she'll go with the flow. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if she's playing it up for the camera, but if she's not, then yeah, this is exactly, I mean, I, I'm concerned for her. It's, it's get her out of the water and she needs exposure therapy to graduate up the ladder of intensity before she can do anything like this. And this event, so some of y'all will know that I talk about, especially in my audio podcast about trauma therapy and one of the principles of trauma recovery is to habituate to the stimulus, meaning that you have to go back there or you have to expose yourself to the thing that scares you. That can be imaginal in your mind or it can be actually doing it. And the uh, important principle that you have to follow in addition to exposure is it, it must be tolerable it must be a little uncomfortable, some maybe moderately uncomfortable, but not like this. Because if you do this, you're, it sets you back. This, if she had a phobia of water, this event will make her phobia potentially worse. So that's a problem. That's me. <laughs> Getting in that water, I felt lost. <laughs> Like I've and people often will laugh 
I, I, I don't know what it is. It's this cultural aspect, or maybe there's something fundamentally funny about it, but it's based on a misunderstanding. It's like with Corey of Corey and Evelyn, when Corey was getting his vaccinations before he went to Ecuador, he had a reaction and because he has a phobia of needles. A lot of people have phobias of needles. And there it was played up for laughs and the mom was being supportive, but and the physician was uh, not being super supportive. So this idea that it's, you know, because we've all had the experience, if you don't have a phobia, you've all had the experience of getting on a ride at the carnival and feeling scared, that rush of, oh, my God, what's happening? And it's enjoyable. You know, it's it it's the anxiety is there, but it's not overwhelming. And so it's fun and it can be funny to watch someone go through that. Like there are all these videos on the internet of people in those in those shotgun rides at the carnival because there's a camera and you just see people just because the worker will come up and say, oh, uh, looks like there's something wrong with the bolts here. It's not really bolted down. And then they launch them and then the people have this whole episode of anxiety and then they get off the ride and they're laughing about it. So it's it's, you know, that's okay. We can laugh about that, I think, some of the time. Most of the time, but when it comes to these kinds of phobias, it's not funny. <laughs> There's nothing funny about someone having an overwhelming, just unbridled fear at, at doing something that you consider to be fine. You know, for you, swimming is relatively safe. And so someone else is being unreasonable. And that's fine. You can recognize like, oh, that person has an un irrational fear that doesn't make a lot of sense. But when people are having genuine meltdowns over anxiety just you know at the very least don't ridicule them and at best be supportive it's very important and one of the best things you can do for someone as they're having overwhelming anxiety is to say i'm here with you i see you i get it I, i'm on your i'm on board you are afraid of x y and z and i respect that i don't have fear of x y and z but i respect that you do and anything i can do to help you i will help if you have a partner that has anxiety or phobias that's one of the baseline what you should be doing is like i understand i recognize you have a fear of that thing and i and i will be there if you are afraid like fear of crowds say with um with uh binium and ariella uh, i think ariella has maybe a slight claustrophobia in crowds I'm not really quite sure i mean the baby and the water and anyway and in that situation, at the very least, Binium should have said, oh, something about this situation is really scaring her, concerning her, and she's starting to panic. And you just want, if you're the Ariella of the situation, you just want your partner to see you and recognize you and understand your distress and take action. You know, that can really reduce your anxiety. If you know that your partner or your friend or your family member it you know is attuned to your feelings and will do and understands the situation and will do what is necessary to get you to a place where you have less anxiety that can solve the problem sometimes but when you have people that don't support it then you're all alone you feel ashamed of yourself you know you don't have support and that actually makes the anxiety worse I felt like it was like the never ending saga of deep ocean water and it felt like hours went by scary. That was two seconds. <laughs> oh, it was a freaking nightmare. <laughs> and I get it because we don't educate people on these things because we live in a society that ignores emotions and feelings and mental health. And even the just calling it mental health is, I think, a bit funny because most people have anxiety about something. So I guess you could just generally call that mental health, but really it's just the human condition. It's like saying hunger is a mental health issue. It's like, no, hung hunger is universal. It's a human thing. We all will get hungry if we don't have enough food. We all will develop phobias <laughs> if uh, we are freaked out by something. You know, you get in a car accident, it's common to be afraid of getting in cars later. So anyway, we need more education, we need more self-awareness, and that's where my channel comes in, I guess, to some extent. All right, well, that is it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.